Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got three excellent studies on solar forcing we can add to the mountain of papers we already have. We'll also see the results of a significant earthquake yesterday in Turkey, and we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. Solar flaring is stable in high C-class range, no significant eruptions, and additionally, the solar storm from the coronal hole stream is now waning away. We do have a bit to keep an eye on in the days ahead, and we're starting with the sunspots, which are very numerous at the moment. But despite their dominance of the disk at this time, the spots are relatively small to medium-sized and lacking complexity. We'll keep watching them closely as they move around today. On the right side here, you can see the large corona hole departing, the one we focused on the last week. But over to the left side at the limb, we can see that the next corona hole is cresting into view now, another 24 hours, and we're likely to see the majority of its expanse. More enhanced plasma streams on deck for about a week from now. On to the earthquakes, top mark of the last day was a six-pointer in Turkey. One death has been recorded, which is lucky given some of the structures with severe damage. Godspeed in the cleanup efforts there. Hopefully the death toll stops at one. And we're on to our three top stories, starting with the solar forcing of the quasi-biennial oscillation. It's a major factor in tropical to global weather patterns. They find the ground level enhancements, a major particle forcing vector from the sun, is the strongest indicator, solidifying past studies on the importance of this connection. We've got another on general climatological forcing by the sun over long cycles. When they see obvious major solar cycle forcing in the peat, you know that's a combination of rain and temperature control, and every known long solar cycle period is seen in the growth in sedimentation rates here. Lastly, the instant forcing of solar flares. This is the X-ray light excitement of the flare hitting the ionosphere. We notice a one minute lag at most for the disruption to the electrodynamic conditions at the top of the sky, which instantly impacts the global electric circuit. That circuit is why there are simultaneous impacts on weather all the way down to the ground when the sun sends significant energy our way. Folks, you've got a pole shift conference coming later this month, one in September too, along with Dr. Dunning coming to Founders Weekend. Big events there and more coming in October and November as well. Find a time to come see us and book your stay at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.